extremely dry here on the Isle of Man. The soil is just so incredibly dry. It seems to be the common thing these last few years. I think our climate is definitely changing. And in this bed earlier in the year, I planted it up with potatoes. There were a couple of borage plants in the center. They've gone over, just dried out. And these first early potatoes have been in for much longer than they should be. And if you plant first early or second early potatoes, you can leave them in. You don't have to dig them up when they're new and tender, although they're at their best at that point. And if you leave them in the ground, the skins thicken up a little bit. So they become much more like standard potatoes, but they don't necessarily increase in size. Now with these potatoes, what I'm going to do is dig them up. I dug some of them up yesterday. We had them for dinner. It was great. I'm going to dig the rest of them up. I've got my tub here. Might need something a little bit bigger. We'll see. And then I'm going to be planting this bed up with some cauliflower that I started at home and they're well and truly ready to go out. I originally wanted to put them in the home garden, but we've just not made the space in the beds for them yet. I'm not quite sure how they'll do because they do need a, a long growing period, but they might crop if I plant them now. It never gets old digging up potatoes. I remember doing this when I was quite young, my grandmother, grandmother's garden, and seeing these beautiful morsels of deliciousness coming up from the soil is magical. And what makes vibrantly colored potatoes all the better is not only are they attractive, but when you are digging them up, you can see them better against the soil. Not so much purple potatoes, which blend in a little bit more, but red potatoes and potatoes that are multicolored as well. So it makes keeping potatoes from sprouting and being volunteer potatoes in this patch next year all the easier. Now, today we're going to finish harvesting this up. I'm going to plant this up. I've got some leeks to plant out as well, some berries to harvest, but I also want to talk to you about the future of my allotment. So I have some news. Stay tuned for that a little bit later in the video. I've raked out this bed now and I've placed these all the year round cauliflowers out about two feet apart and there's five cabbages on the end as well. So the, the last of the golden acre cabbages which I have planted at home. Now with these, all of them actually, all these brassicas, I'm going to plant them really firm. I'm just gonna dig a hole, plant each plant, water it in really well and then I'm going to put a layer of mulch, so compost on the top, just to lock in that moisture. And then I'm gonna do an additional step. I'm going to create a little patchwork quilt of the cornstarch landscaping fabric around each plant. And that will help to hold the soil and the compost down and retain even more moisture and protect the base of each plant from pests. But it's really important this first step when you're planting each plant to firm it in. Cauliflowers and cabbages and Brussels sprouts, they want to be planted very firmly. And if you don't get them in really firmly, then what ends up happening is that the curds or the head of cabbage or the Brussels sprouts, they get really blowsy. So they don't really form tight heads. They're just kind of loose and flowing, which is fine. They're edible, but if you want a really firm head of cabbage or cauliflower, firm in your plants. The last step is putting some netting 
over these lovely succulent brassicas. This is butterfly netting, so it's small enough mesh so that uh, cabbage white butterflies can't get in and lay their eggs, but it's gonna keep birds off as well. And we have loads of pheasants up here at the allotment site and they love pecking and eating anything, including leek leaves I've just found out. I planted some out last week and I found that quite a few of them have been snipped and eaten. So I'm going to plant up some more next and we're gonna to have to take some precautions to keep those birds off. The last time that I made a video here at the allotment, I sowed carrot seeds all along here, lovely varieties, and I placed boards over the seeds after I'd sown them because I'd heard that this was a great tip for helping to encourage germination in an in-situ environment like this. Anyway, I came the first time, I think a couple days later, to check on them and I lifted up the boards and guess what? Dozens, I mean dozens of slugs. I didn't know that I had that many slugs here in the allotment. So I removed the boards and it has just been so incredibly dry and I've not been able to get up here as often as I would like. And as a consequence, not a single carrot seed germinated. Very sad, but you know, it happens. So I'm salvaging this space and instead I'm going to sow or plant up this entire bed with leeks. And I've been growing leeks at home in these trays and I have two varieties. There's the Bulgarian giant leek and then there's Northern Lights. And I've already put in two rows of the Bulgarian giant leek and I will fill the rest of the space around the poppies, around the calendula, around the chives with even more. I'm going to come over here so you can see a little bit better. And I have my leek seedlings and I have my trusty dibber, AKA a stick. You can get purpose-made dibbers, but what's the point when you can use a stick or you can use a broken tool handle? Right, last year I grew leeks as well and I grew them as multi-sown leeks. And it is a, a method that Charles Dowding communicates and shares and it's supposed to be a great way of growing leeks. Well, I for one don't like multi-sewned leeks. There's not really any point for me at least. I like the really big thick leeks that I can chop up and put into everything from burgers to uh, casseroles to stews and the, the little leeks oh they're fine I suppose for some people but for me I want big leeks and so with growing those, you need to give them plenty of space. And you can see there's probably about a foot, slightly less between those seedlings. And I'm gonna give the next row the exact same. And all I'm doing is making a hole with my stick. And I'll start with these Northern Lights leeks here. And then I'll just pull out one of these seedlings. They're a good size, a lot of them. This one's a really good size. And then all I'm gonna do is stick it down in the hole. And I'm not going to bury it with more soil. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to water it in with the hose and that's it. The hole that you make with the dipper guides the leek to grow out and fill that space. And this is the traditional way to plant leeks. And with this, you'll get nice big leeks that you can harvest through late autumn, right throughout winter. Elephant garlic. I have some growing at home as well. And in a recent video, I mentioned to you this idea that you plant elephant garlic the first year, it forms a monobulb. And then in the second year, that monobulb divides out into massive cloves. That is accurate for if you spring plant elephant garlic. If you autumn plant it, and I planted this one out last autumn, 
then it has a longer growing period and then there's a better chance of it dividing out into cloves in its first year. It doesn't always happen. You've got to dig up a couple just to, to make sure, but oftentimes planting in autumn gives it a little bit of an extra growing period. Now I'm really pleased that these have divided out into cloves because it means that I can harvest the lot and take it home and not worry about it next year. And this really pertains to some news that I have about the allotments. I've just picked the very first of the red raspberries. These are Joan Jay and they're an autumn fruiting raspberry and Usually they start producing towards the end of August, the main crop, but there's always a few extra early berries just to tide us over until the, the main harvest arrives. And the same goes for these golden raspberries. And so I'm just picking them too. Now, when I was just digging the elephant garlic, I mentioned that I was happy that most of the garlic had divided out into individual cloves. There were actually a few that didn't, so they were mono bulbs, and I could either leave them in to divide up next year, or they're perfectly edible as a mono bulb as well. It's just one mass rather than the elephant garlic dividing into cloves. I lifted them all though because I don't plan on being here next year, at least next summer. And it has been such a dilemma since we moved to the new house. And as you've seen here on the channel, we've done a lot of work over this, especially this year with building the polycrub and building the beds, and there's just so much more ahead. That veg patch is just a tiny part of the garden. It's a half of an acre. So there's plenty more space down at the, the bottom of the slope. There's a, another uh, side garden around the back as well. And I'm really struggling with finding time for the allotment and the home garden, especially since they're a good drive away, a good 25 minute drive away. And so I find myself less and less at the allotment because the home garden is directly outside. And I was thinking about this recently and realized that this has happened before. I've had an allotment here in Laxey since 2010, but this isn't my first allotment. At the bottom of the slope was my first, and I had that for a good few years until this one opened up. And I wanted this one because it's, it was more convenient. It was close to the shed, close to the parking area, close to the tap, all of that. But I wanted to keep my old one as well. I couldn't let it go. But the reality is, is that it was just all that way down the slope and it was too much work. And that was just another allotment. And so realizing this, I think that it's realistic to say that I should focus my efforts on the home garden. Now saying that, there are aspects of the allotment that I want to replicate at home. Plants that I want to see there as well. So my current plan right now is to evaluate what's here on my plots, so the plants in particular, and start making strategic plans to move them in one way or another, either through cuttings or division or saving seeds. And one concern that I do have is the New Zealand flatworm, which I've spoken about in past videos. It's an invasive pest here on the Isle of Man and it decimates earthworms and I have hardly any worms here at the allotment but at home I have tons so I really cannot chance bringing the New Zealand flatworm home and it is in the soil so have to think about ways to clean the soil off if I want to take plants but that's for another day a lot of that will happen in the autumn and the winter so that is where I am right now in regards to thinking about the allotment. And 
I have the rent on this place paid up until early next year. So that gives me a good six months to finish the crops here, to tidy the place up, and then to potentially pass it back to the association for someone else to rent. I admit that I do feel a bit sad about the idea, but you know, when you move from one house to the next, sometimes you feel that sadness as well. But once you get firmly stuck into your new home, you hardly ever really think about what came previously. And I hope that the same is going to be true for my move to focus completely on the home garden. Let me know what you think and what your thoughts are on this. And if you have any ideas for how I could possibly keep both realistically without having to pay someone to come up here and do the planting and the weeding for me. Now, I also said in the last video, I, I offered to show you my bees. The bees are going to be moving home as well. And that is firm. It's just going to be so much easier to have them at home, but it's not going to happen until a little bit later this year. So I think autumn and I haven't had a chance to show you today the bees, but I will definitely have that in the works. I also want to say a thank you to my Patreon supporters and you know who you are, but especially Suzanne and Yeti massive support and it's just so cool to have that community as well and if you want to learn more about my patreon there's a link down in the video description thanks so much for coming along with me to the allotment this time leave any questions or comments down below and i will see you next week for another video here on lovely greens bye for now mm -hmm.